Off the Ball. This is News Talk. And this is Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk with John Duggan until five. Don't forget, you can get all of our content, videos, interviews, podcasts, breaking news, and plenty more on the OTB Sports app. Download that now for free in the App Store or in the Play Store. This week's Saturday panel is brought to you with thanks to Carry Out, Ireland's largest independent off licence with over 100 stores nationwide and voted Ireland's number one off licence in 2022, now delivering nationwide. Visit Out. Dot IE for more. You can text us 53106 for streaming the conversation, so listen on News Talk on your radio. You can also watch us if you want to on the Off the Ball digital and social channels for Periscope on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and on the OTB Sports app. So at four o'clock Irish time tomorrow, the 2022 FIFA World Cup begins in Qatar. It's a tournament that's been dogged by controversy, but once it kicks off, it's going to become thick and fast, folks. 64 games in less than a month, culminating with the final on Sunday, December the 18th. So to look ahead and chat about their experience of a World Cup. We're joined in studio by Mark Hinsler, who played for the Republic of Ireland at the 2002 tournament in Japan and South Korea, and on the line by the Ireland-Liverpool legend, Mark Lawrence, a veteran of many World Cups in the commentary box with the BBC. I think to make this easier, we're going to call you Mark, and we're going to call Laro Laro. So it'll make it easier. Uh, Mark, how, you keeping well? Very well, yes, thank you. And Laro, has the form? Laro, can you hear us? Oh, sorry, yeah. Yes, I can. I can. Wake up, Lara, will you? I'm good. I'm all good, thank Wake you. Wake up. Um, no, no, good Good to talk to you. So, Mark Kinsella, 20 years on, um, how would you look back on all of this? You know, we've got a World Cup starting tomorrow in Japan and South Korea. Probably the highlight of your life as a professional. Absolutely, yeah. Um, 13 years to get there when I first went over as a 16-year-old. But uh, when it comes around, it's, it's hard to believe that we haven't qualified before since then, till now. Um, you know, it's 20 years since I last performance in a World Cup but at that time it was I was 30 I'd been six years at Charlton had an operation then that day the um, Christmas before and Corb sort of looked after me I had played majority of the qualifying games missed maybe two or three through yeah. injury and suspension um, so I was coming into the last six months waiting for the waiting for the old um, team to be announced the squad to be announced and you know Corb's looked after me leading up to it with time to recover from the knee up um, and then just to just to be, get a phone call to say you, you've made it. You know, he gave me, I think I played about three or four games back end of the season just to prove to Mick that I, I was back to yeah. see it. The, the injury went well, the recovery was good and I was ready to go. Um, and just to get the phone call to say you're in the squad was was amazing. I'm sure when you were a young lad, because uh, you joined Colchester in the late 80s, you're watching Italia 90, you're watching USA 94, then you're lining up for the national anthem in Japan mm-hmm. and Korea. It must have been very special. Uh, it was, I mean... <clears throat> 88 was the start of it all. Yes, yeah, Stuttgart. Um, you know, before I even went to England. Um, and then 1994. Just the atmosphere. You know, watching the lads line up, the camera going through each player. And when you're looking at that as a kid, you, you want to be there. You know, I wanted to be a footballer from a very young age and then to get the opportunity, you know, to, to start at the very bottom of the, the pyramid, as they say in England, and then drop another another level down to non-league for two years. You, you think the opportunity is gone. But... Um, I was mentally strong at that, at that age. I, w- I knew what I wanted to do. I knew where I wanted to go in life as a footballer. And it was going to be a long, hard struggle to get there. Um, and then when the chart move came along, it was a, a step closer to, to Mick. And I think at that time, Mick was changing. Andy Townsend, Ray Houghton were all starting to retire. And they needed new fresh blood, I suppose, to, to come into it. And I just had made that move to Charlton at the time Mick was starting to breed a few younger players in. And, and, and the opportunity came. And you know, you have to take it. You, know, you, you you only get one chance, really. And when I came, I, you know, I grabbed it. What was vivid about that World Cup? What was the highlight? Um, playing. Yeah. Um, playing, <laughs> just playing. Just playing, yeah, because, <clears throat> excuse me, I was on the tarmac at Dublin Airport and I just got, got to my seat when Mick pulled me down to have a chat with me. And, he, you know, he told me I'm going to wear the number 12. I'm going with Matty and Roy. And he said, that's me front two, but you'll be the first off the bench when needed. I hadn't even left for the World Cup. This is Dublin Airport, and you're told already that uh, you're going to be a bit part player. So the the however long the flight was and whatever it, it sort of it was a vivid memory. Then the World Cup, I thought I'd lost everything because I've seen it before, and players I've travelled and not played and been part of it and and enjoyed it all. But you wanted to play, and at that at that moment, I thought my World Cup had gone. You were crestfallen. Mm. You were gutted, devastated. I played every game, about two or three. I was Roy's partner for three or four years. <laughs> and, you know, these things happen. So how did you feel when it all kicked off? Then, <coughs> like Pan? Yeah, it um, kept myself to myself. Yeah. I asked to do interviews. I didn't want to get involved in anything. I, you know, you it shocked, it Were you shocked at how quickly it escalated? Mm, very, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's been a lot been said yeah, and it's yeah, all been yeah. done. You don't want to go over, yeah. but the, the two or three days that it started to finish, it's mind blowing how it all. Because we were going to Japan on the Friday. That's the mm-hmm. thing I think mm-hmm. is sometimes is forgotten about that we were, yeah. we were only a couple of days away from going to top class facilities. Yeah, so. and I've met Roy once or twice yeah. away from football on holidays, maybe. And, and you never bring it up, but just in my own mind, I was thinking, you know, I ended up playing four games in the World Cup that a week earlier I wasn't even thinking of it. I was just going to be a, a supporter for the lads. And all of a sudden, I, I ended up playing four games. But them three days, it seemed like a blur. It just it happened, and then it was over. But if you'd have waited 48 hours, 72 hours, I think that's when the World Cup started. Yeah. That's when you turned up and you realised where you were. Right. That's the, the, you know, for me, that's when it, it, when it started. Up to that, I mean, I remember we were going on a Wednesday. We were going to the hotel. We were going to watch a, a show in the evening. I couldn't even tell you what it was about. Turned up at half six, me in the lobby to go up. One of the kid man came up to me and said, uh, Roy's left. I said, you're playing Cameroon six days. <laughs> Two and a half hours later, <laughs> I come back down and, Roy's staying. It's fucking great news, isn't it? And all of a sudden, I'm up and down, up and down. I don't know what's happening. So I just wanted to keep myself away from everything. Didn't do any interviews and just let it pan out. And, Did the meeting shock you at the team meeting? Um, I suppose Laura will tell you. I've been in a few yeah. dressing rooms yeah, and things yeah. have been said. and it's. Yeah. But I just think... Where we were, the situation we were in, it was a bit of a shock. Yeah, things were said, and yeah. the it, technology wasn't great. It was an island; it, 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 everything yeah. just went wrong. It went wrong. You know, balls didn't turn up, kids weren't there, but the pitch weren't great. They spent two years getting it ready for us for the World Cup. We turned up. I think Stevie Finnan done his angle on the first day training. Yeah. It, it was a shambles, but I think the whole idea about that was the climatise, get ready for the World Cup, yeah. which when we yeah. were going to travel. And but we had a lot of hiccups in that week and. How much of a cloud was it and is it over the whole thing now, 20 years on, for you? Well, listen, it's always going to be mentioned. Yeah. Biggest thing yeah. that ever happened in that World Cup, I think, yeah. before I even kicked off. So you will always get questions. It'll be there for ever. I think it's going to be one of them moments that will always be remembered for the 2002 World Cup. For me, like I said, I ended up playing four games. Yeah. And the um, best memory I'll ever have. Uh, you can understand Mick's viewpoint, but it was a shame that Roy didn't play because it, Absolutely. It, we, we could have gone very far. Yeah, and I have no no problem saying that. Listen, we, we, we were great together. Matty and Roy were great together. Me and Matty didn't play a lot, but we, we were okay together. But Roy is the talisman. Roy plays. I have no question that we probably would have done better. Yeah. But we were dealt a deck of cards that we had to play with. And that was me and Matty, and we had to deal with it. But yes, we probably would have done he would have done better. I'm not going to say, oh, no, I really wouldn't have made a difference. He'd have made a massive difference. At the time, he was one of the best, if the not best. the best in the world. Yeah. What, what, why was that, do you think? Um, I admired players in, in Mark's era, the Ronnie Whelans, yeah. the Ray Heldens, the Paul McGrath. <laughs> and I watched Roy well, playing lower league, so I'm watching Matthew today the day like everyone else on a Saturday after you play away at Barrow on a Saturday and you get back. When you when I actually play with these players at the top of the game, you can only get better. So every training session I, I had for Ireland, every game I played with him, I took it back to my club. I watched the way he stood in the, in the, for Ireland on a, as a captain, chest out and didn't talk to him, focused. I brought that back to my club. I think he made me a better player. He had to. If you, if you couldn't improve playing alongside him and you're playing within 10 yards of him, 20 yards of him, every mistake you make, he lets you know. But every good thing you do, he lets you know. And I just walk back 10 foot tall every time I returned to my club after an international. I think I became a better player when I played alongside Mark Lawrence, and it's funny how careers work out, isn't it? Because, you know, we were very unlucky not to qualify for the 82 World Cup. You never played at a World Cup, but you won a European Cup, you won five leagues. You've been to World Cups as a, as a commentator. Roy did play at a World Cup in 94. It's just funny how things work out for players for whatever reason. Yeah, well, you just you just never know. I mean, it's such an absolutely fascinating and engrossing story, and I remember at the time you were, you were either pro Roy or anti Roy and um, everything else that that went with it. But as you rightly said, I think you just said before that the whole thing was a little bit of a shambles. But but if he'd been playing, as Mark was saying, it's another thirty percent on that team, John. You know, he was, he was that good a player, and I think he intimidated everybody, he intimidated opposition, but also he intimidated his own players to be better, um, and that's what he demanded from them. But um, yeah, and. It's, I just felt it was a strange thing in many, many ways because, you know, you, you, I don't know how many hours a flight would have been, 12, 14, 15. You go all that way and then you suddenly decide, ah, this is not for me and, and you want to go home. 
I'll never, ever understand that. But listen, everybody's different. Well, so, Mark, you've been to many World Cups um, in the BBC commentary box. What's been the highlight mm. for you for all the World Cups you've been to? Oh, crikey. Um, well, probably I would say maybe the first one, which was France, what, France 98. Yeah. A, because, a, because John, we spent five and a half weeks in Paris um, by the next door to the Louvre. Um, obviously went in and seen all the paintings and everything, but we were at stadium night. I think we all had a suite in this hotel. Um, the great thing about it as well was we could just walk to the studio and the studio was like the old RAC club in, in, in Paris and probably, what, about six floors were on the top floor. Um, you could see all across the landscape of Paris and it was, it, I mean, I'm, you know, um, I love Paris anyway and I love the French for, for many reasons and obviously I hate them for other reasons, but that will never be beaten. Um, although, 94... Um, so I went in 94 and I was working for Guinness and also for the Irish Times. And Jack found out and he says, you're training with us. And I said, I can't run. So that's why I finished playing. He said, no, he said, you're training with us. And so I trained with the team and travelled down with them, obviously, for the, for the game. Obviously, Ray Houghton against the Italians, which, which was fabulous, and travelled back. And I, I just felt like one of the players without you trained with play, them. Which... So, you, like, really, you're part of the, the picture? Yeah. Yeah, I stayed in the hotel and everything, but I, I, I said to Jack, I'm not eating with you because, you know, because you'll be having meetings and chats. And I said, I, I really don't want to be that, be that person. He said, no, no, you're a part of it and you would have been the captain, all those kind of things. I said, yeah, Jack, but I'm not. And I don't I don't think it's fair. So, um, no, it was good. It was it was the day before we beat um, Italy 1-0. We had a little kind of nine aside on the pitch in the stadium. and I, And I was... He said to me, I want you to play centre-back. And I said, OK. I said, if no one else. He went, no, there's no one else. And I, I think I was, I can't remember I played it alongside. It might have been Bobby, it might have been Phil. And so we were playing in this game, just a little bit of shadow, as, as Mark will know, really, and there's no tackling or anything. It's just trying to get the shape right for the team and all those kind of things. And um, all of a sudden, and I just stood probably just outside the 18-yard box and we, were, we had the ball, we were going forward. And um, I'm pretty sure... I, I'm not great with my tee shots, but I think Albert Reynolds. He was just he had the time, yeah. Sudden, yeah, he just appeared, and he and I kind of looked at him. He looked at me. He said, "Ah, Mr. Lawrenson, how are you?" I said, "Ah, tee shot, all very good, thank you very much." And I, I was just, and he, he came on, and obviously we stopped the game, and everybody had a quick chat with him, and he wished everybody well, and all those kind of things. And I was just kind of thinking, imagine like if it, it was probably Tony Blair, man, to be in charge in England. Imagine Tony Blair doing that. It would have been an absolute circus. But the fact that the tee shot could just walk on and have a chat with a few of the players, I just I just thought was brilliant. And also, and also that was OJ's day as well, wasn't it? It was the night It was, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, we were in the bar. Um, obviously, the players weren't in there, but we were in the bar, the lads who weren't playing. And we were watching this white car being driven around LA, obviously with him driving it and all that kind of stuff. And there was a few of the supporters in there and this this it just broke out singing, you know, OJ, 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 which was <laughs> ab absolutely brilliant. I mean, only our lot would have thought of it. It was fab. It was, I think we had a bit of a night after that as well. Lara, I don't know. I don't know. There's a documentary actually was done by ESPN on that. I think it's the 17th of June, 1994. It was Arnold Palmer's last ever appearance at the US Open. I think there was a okay. big... Uh, there was a it was Bolivia against Germany, I think, at the first World Cup game, and there was a a win, I think, in ice hockey or something like that as well. But I never knew this, Laro. And uh, did you get the sense that we were going to do well against Italy from what you'd seen that day? No, <laughs> no. Well, listen, listen, it's the Italians, <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. also well, they reached also the final, didn't they? Yeah, 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 and also climate wise as well, which suited them rather than the us, as we found out later in in the competition. But now, I mean. You know, you look, you look and watch Italy, and I mean, they're not at this World Cup, which is is unfathomable when you think about it. But no, I didn't, I, I didn't really fancy us in all honesty. But absolutely fabulous. And it was on on the way back. I can't remember. You'll know better than me. But who who was our Scottish centre forward? Tommy Coyne. Yeah. Well, do, do you know? Basically, I ne I never realised it. So we're on the we're on the plane coming back, and everybody's happy and everyone's having a drink and stuff like that. And I remember the doc saying to everybody, you know, don't forget, don't forget, you've got to keep drinking water, got to keep drinking water because it had been so hot in the game and all those kind of things. Tommy Coyne ended up in the hour way. He passed out. 
Yeah. And of course, straight away we were going, how many pints has he had? No, do, you know, do you know what? Dehydrated. Do you know what, yeah. John? You can get you can get drunk from drinking too much water. I don't I don't know what the technical term is, but that's exactly what happened to Tommy Coyne. Right. Okay. In the in the in, in obviously as a as the plane was flying, I think it was some New Zealand organization that were flying flying us and everything. And and he, he was literally drunk and he was stretched out. On the floor of the yeah, he, was, uh, he, was, he was ill. He was ill. Yeah, it yeah. was ill. Yeah, and yeah. we're thinking, crikey, what you know? Is he going to be okay? And and that's that's the outcome was he'd actually taken on board too much water. Yeah. Did, did you go to the Orlando and Florida then with the with the squad? Yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. the heat the heat must have been just utterly oppressive, was it? It was mad. It was mad. And um, I'd I'd spent about six months in Florida, so I, I knew exactly what it what it was going to be like. And I. I also remember doing the Mexico game, that'd be right, wouldn't it? Doing the yes. Mexico game, just in my shorts at the back of the country box. It was that hot, John. It was mad. And I'm looking at, like, Stan Staunton and, and the fair hair boys in, the, in our team and thinking, oh, my God, good luck. Because, I mean, they were, they were burning. It was mad. Because Mark Kinsella, when we played Spain, we were fitter. We were we, we were a better team in that. We, we seem to have gone the whole 90 minutes anyway full of legs and uh, but then we had a lot of young young lads we had Duffer, the Duffer and, Duffer and that the was the Kane that shot. was like I know Robbie Keane was brilliant against Germany and everything but the Duffer in that World Cup was sensational uh, it's just <clears throat> unless you play with a lot of know you give certain people a ball you know something's going to happen and with Damien and, and, and Robbie I mean they, these two just set the whole world alight uh, in that tournament um, they just knew something was going to happen and every time Duffer he's very direct very positive, and there's always seemed to be an end, an end product, whether it's a cross or a shot. And every time he gave him the ball, he knew he was going to travel 20, 20 30 yards, and he uh, he was on fire every time he took it that night. Um, we were disappointed. I mean, we we had a penalty missed. We still had another penalty. <clears throat> we're back in the game and one all. Um, you know, and you're always chasing, but you don't you don't want to actually. I think it was a golden goal. Then was it? If you, if they'd have scored, you'd have won it and you'd have lost it. Yeah. So I think that was playing through your mind. You know, you're attacking. You'd be you could win the game, well. and then a little yeah. bit of cautious on the other side because you don't really want to go out. So, is the penalties the best way to go out? Probably on that night. I think we were we were head to head with them for 120 minutes, and you know people ask about penalties, and, and you know I think the five lads we sent up, I'll put their names down. We're all penalty takers for the clubs, um, and unfortunately, you know it, it didn't go like 1990 for us, and uh, we went out that night. 53106, bringing back memories of travelling to the 2002 World Cup and staying in hotel rooms the size of a kitchen press. Saw Mark at the fans' barbecue in Chiba in Japan in 2002. An absolute gentleman, a fi- great player for Ireland, did the midfield and the country proud that summer, says Lara in Lucan. Did you have that um, sense of a real connection with the supporters out there that travelled? I think we did. Um, I think, you know, when we before we started, I think we had, whatever, 4.5 million people hate us um, going into a tournament. I didn't think we had any support. Um, because of the the saga that had happened, I think we knew. Going it wasn't into, that many. There was a big split. Uh, yeah, we were, going, we were going into the Cameroon game. <clears throat> I think there was more pressure in that game than I ever had for Ireland, um, knowing that we needed to get result anyway to progress, um, but also to get the nation back on our side. Um, so once that happened after the Cameroon, you know, you got into the Germany and, and a little bit higher, more confident, um, and that night was was probably the highlight of the World Cup. I know I heard Robbie talking about it there last week. Um, but that was a night, the way it ended, the goal. Um, giving ourselves a chance, I thought we played very well that night as well. Um, but the, the scenes afterwards when, when Robbie put the ball in the net was, was amazing. So how do you feel now then when you're looking at the Republic of Ireland team? And we're in the wilderness. I mean, there's no doubt about that with mm. Stephen Kenny. Uh, are, you, are you hopeful about the future or are you despondent? Um, not despondent though. Um, Disappointed, I think. Uh, well, what's possession football? I mean, we, you, you watch the game on Thursday. And, yeah, we have a lot of possession. We play it out from the back, but teams will let you do that. It's what is. Can you go forward? Can you can you attack quickly and, and get in behind or get between the lines and, and create chances? Um, you know, you, you, like Stephen has a way of playing. Yeah, that with Dundalk um, for years and winning the winning the league over here. International is a different a different kettle of fish altogether. I think points are more important than performance to start with. I think it's all about results, it's qualifying for the Euros, qualifying for the World Cups, and then try and progress football after that. I think Stephen went in with trying to say, well, this is how we're going to play. We've been too idealistic then? Uh, I think so. Um, right. I think so, yeah. But, uh, listen, 
where I see now we got France coming up next and then Dutch as well and then the Dutch and then I hear uh, you know, these two is the first time they played together Robinson and um, uh, Ovevemi Ovevemi, yeah. you know and then the next game was France um, so you always look at and I look at teams before and I look at Mick as a manager and what happened in eight years. they're good players who can play football but they know how to win football matches and as we went from 88 to 90 to 94 with, with, with big players playing at top levels in, in England and then we go up to 2002 and there's 80% of that team were playing in the Premier League 60% probably playing every week so we were on a regular fitness but we knew how to play Mick didn't say like play this particular way if you get the ball down play play what you see but when you have players and as players you know what your players are good at and you know if you get the ball to Duffer he's going to get to the byline and cross it yes you have big Niall Quinn but he didn't play a lot of the games so it wasn't back to front and hit the big man we had we had Duffer and, and, and Robbie up top who were small but could head but knew where the danger was could be taller players to headers we knew how to defend but we also knew how to play through the middle if it need be we knew when to go long and don't put ourselves under pressure I think at this moment in time we seem to be right we have to play out from Basuna and he looked a little bit lost whether he go long or short sometimes and then end up going long yeah you can do that to a certain point but a lot of teams will let you do that because they know you're not confident they're not comfortable at times and they'll press you and that's when mistakes happen that's when you got to say right as players we'll go long for 5 or 10 minutes play in their half all our best football under Stephen Kenny is when we're 1-0 down, we're chasing the game and we're getting out to a doubter. We're putting balls in the box. We're creating chances. Things are starting to happen. Yeah, they don't happen, but we get the ball back in there and all of a sudden the last 15 minutes were great. But it was not a lot of football play. It was a lot of... So that chaos, that tempo, that Irish style in uh, inverted commas is uh, that's important. That's been there since 88. Yeah. It's been there since... When, when you need to roll your sleeves up and the Ireland will do that. But against the better teams, I think someone was saying, Norway, drop off and don't give us a lot of space. When we play big teams, we drop off and we don't give the France, the Netherlands. When you see that, we won't be going out pressing them high. We'll be dropping right off and making it very difficult for them. Teams are going to come to us and do that. How do you break them down? Sometimes it's put the balls in the box, come out, have long shots, push them out. Then you might be able to play between the lines. But, you know, it's, I think it's a result business. I think that's where we are. We want to qualify for the World Cups. We want to qualify for the Euros. Do I soon see that at the moment? No. Do I see the next group is tough? Yeah. But... We'll, in 2000 we had Yugoslavia and Croatia we got pipped in the playoffs to Turkey then the next 2002 we have Portugal and what about the Holland. argument though that we don't have the players of that quality anymore <clears throat> that we don't have players in the Premier League like we got Nathan well, we don't, and Devin yeah, yeah. and we did then you know. yeah that's what I'm saying we don't have a lot of players playing at the highest level yeah. League 1 Yeah, I think yeah. you can play for Ireland now in League 1 if you're playing regularly Yeah, um, you know a lot of championship a lot of players are still not playing regularly in the championship so it is tough it is and Stephen's always said if you're playing for your your club you have to play for your club you've got to get minutes before you come to Ireland but he's, gonna, he's coming to the stage where a lot of them are not playing minutes and he still has to pick a team yeah you know but when, and a lot of say every time you come for is different I think you just feel you get that extra energy whether you're playing week in or week out for, for your club is not an issue as long as you're doing it for Ireland and we have in past players that have done that and still put a performance in but like I said we're, we're going through a different a different time now Lara would be there one World Cup game that would stand out as the best one you've seen of all the ones you've been to? Oh crikey, John! Um, I'm just I'm just trying to think. Maybe maybe when uh, maybe when your man got sent off for France. Zinedine Zidane. Remember that in, in the final. Yeah, Zidane. In uh, we're in against, Berlin. I think against right? Italy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and only because as much as anything that I was a. Uh, I was co-commenting, commentating with with Mots and with John, and I actually wasn't watching the game at the time. I was just watched what happened between Zidane and uh, the Italian fellow who played for Matarazzi, Everton. Yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, it was horrible, by the way. And obviously, you know, Zidane for all his ability, and he was like a sensational player. And I mean, you know, wherever you meet him, the first thing you you thought about, you looked at him. There was the size of him. Um, and he just had this kind of ability to just ah, he just he had radar. He was he scored. He played people in. He was big and he was strong and he was imposing. But uh, and I just watched obviously what happened and I, and I nudged I, I nudged John and he's like one thing you don't do really with John Motson was upset him as you as he was commentating and he looked at me like it was a stare of a thousand deaths and I said he's just chinned him or tried to chin him I'm sure. Anyway, so 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 that would be it. And the fact also that you know, because where it was, 
um, in terms of Berlin and what it had meant to the to the Germans and all those kind of things. So I would probably say that one, which is probably not the most attractive and you wouldn't say the best ever game, but in terms of what it was like to be there, it was amazing. And there are things you see, Mark, that people don't see when they're watching on the television. You see the quality of Zidane, you see the quality of Messi, well, you see Neymar, you see, you see how good these players are. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you know, all this fuss I mean, about Ronaldo and Ronaldo's been a, a brilliant player and I think he's, he signed his own death warrant, to be honest with you, at Man United. But for me, M- Messi is the best player I've ever seen. Uh, absolutely sensational. And the, and the reason he gets the nod over Ronaldo would be there's a team player. He plays for the team. He doesn't play for himself. And he's, he's just sensational. I'd love Argentina to go a long way in this competition. But I somehow feel because of um, the way that PSG play with, with Messi is that, you know, the teams they play, they can just run over them whenever there's 20 minutes of Messi, etc. Neymar is good enough to win a game in, in the French League. And I just think it might be a couple of years too late for him. But I would love him and the Argentinians to do well because I just think he's been sensational. And it also, you know, look at the size of him. He's tiny. You know, look at the way football is and physical and everything about it. And yeah, I mean, he used to, he used to watch Spanish football and, and everybody watched Barcelona. He'd score a worldie every single game. And you kind of think he can't get any better than that. And he did. He just got better and better and better. And, oh, yeah, I just think he's absolutely fantastic. This is the Saturday the panel, Mark Lawrence and Mark Kinsler, reminiscing on World Cups and uh, looking ahead to this World Cup in Qatar with carrier.ie on our Saturday panel. We're back after the break. 53106 for your text, folks. Who's going to win the World Cup? Are you even excited about it? Are you even going to bother watching it, given everything that's happened? But if you are, who's going to win it? Who's going to win the Golden Boot? Who's going to be the player of the tournament? What are your predictions? We'd love to hear from you on 53106. We're back with the Saturday panel, part two, after the news here on Off the Ball on News Talk. Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk with John Duggan. Until five, you can text us 53106 or tweet us at Off the Ball. This week's Saturday panel is brought to you with thanks to Carry Out, Ireland's largest independent off licence. With over 100 stores nationwide and voted Ireland's number one off licence in 2022, now delivering nationwide. Visit carryout.ie for more. We're looking ahead to the FIFA World Cup in Qatar with two former Republic of Ireland internationals, Mark Hinsla in studio and Mark Lawrence on the line. And Mark Hinsla, you were just telling us about the sporting family, your son Liam plays for Walsall and uh, your daughter Alice uh, won a bronze medal at the Olympics in gymnastics. They have, yeah, and come away with a silver in the Worlds there two, two weeks ago. Um, oh yeah, it's great. I mean, I get to watch Liam on telly every Saturday home yeah. and away with the with the old codes that they give you to, to watch him and um, he's doing very well. He's, you know, he's 26, he's League 2 and he, playing consistent. He obviously has ambitions to go further um, but like I said, I've spoke to him, I've told him, you know, game by game and look after yourself and, you know, he's picked up the odd injury here and there and he's desperate to get back and, you know, you have to still still talk to him at 26 um, but he's his own his own player, he has his own style um, and he's doing very well. Um, as for the young one, Alice, I mean, that's a completely different sport. Out, out this is in Tokyo now for Team it, GB. That's right, yeah. Um, and then they had the Worlds there up in Liverpool two weeks, three weeks ago. Um, she's had a fantastic two or three years uh, with England, um, winning bronze, silvers, and individual medals. It's a completely different sport. I, I, you know, I can't even. I can only watch. I can't. I can't talk to her. <laughs> you can't about give her any advice. I can't. No advice in this one. I mean, I, all I know it's 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 a mental game with her, and she's. You know, the beam would be my dreaded thing when I'm watching the four apparatus. You know, the vault, grand, the floor, the bars, but the beam. You know, it's four inches wide and what they do on it. And I've seen it from a kid working away up to these moves that they have to do, and they do it on the floor and. They're falling on the floor, even though it's a floor, and then they, 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 they slowly the beam comes up a, about a half a foot, and then slowly up to where they are now, but four inches wide. Um, and the things they do on it. I mean, whenever I'm watching it live, I walk out <laughs> because it's a make or break. It's it's one of them situations that if you fall. Did you walk out for the Olympic? <clears throat> I walked out of the room to the kitchen when she was when right. she was doing it, but had the sort of volume up. <laughs> um, but you're just waiting for that. Oh, <laughs> but once you don't hear it, and when all four girls got through the 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 beam. Um, without any falls, you know they have a chance because I think that's where a lot of medals are lost and won. Because um, you lose a point or a point and a half for for falling, and you know once they got through that, you know the rest is 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 down to themselves. So, yeah, no, very proud, very I proud. Know, as you should be, no, great stuff. Mark Lawrence, uh, this World Cup of Guitar, look, there's been so much controversy about it, and it's been done to death, and Infantino didn't really uh, uh, 
uh, enhance it today. But when we yeah. look at when we look at the contenders, England, you live in England, obviously, Mark. What's the feeling? Is there a, a sense that maybe it's a tournament too far for Gareth Southgate, or like I think the the, the draw is quite favourable for them? Can they catch fire? Uh, well, <clears throat> I mean, after the Euros, which they should basically have won, shouldn't they? Yeah. In all honesty, John, home, home advantage as well. I just I look at them. Um, Defensively, not great. Um, they've got a whole host of attacking midfield players who are outstanding. Kane up front. Um, I mean, he'll need to have a really good tournament if they're going to go to, uh, far enough in terms of threatening to win it. But I just I, I look at Gareth and I just think, you know, these two holding midfield players, I, I don't really get it because most of the time as well, they play with uh, three at the back, England and wing backs, etc. And he's he's a little bit, playing football with, with the handbrake on and I think this will be his last competition whatever happens in terms of him being the, the England manager so so why not go for it a little bit but he's, he's going to be spoiled for choice um, in terms of the players that he that, that he picks I just you know you go with Rice as a central holding midfield player Bellingham somewhere in and evolves with everything um, and obviously then the rest is well you can choose your own kind of players can't you Foden you, you know Grealish if you want uh, the 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 Arsenal boys etc. So going forward, very very good. But will they be allowed to go forward? I'm not sure they will. Will you play Harry Maguire? Do you think? Yeah, play him. You play him because I think I think when he was interviewed, uh, Gareth interviewed, and he said he's ne- he's never ever let me down. Which generally, as a manager, is tantamount to saying he'll start with him. Whether he starts in a two. I think maybe he might he might start him in a three, but a little bit more protection. Yeah, but I think I, I think he'll play. There's one thing he won't be tired, will he? No, Mark Insula. What about England's chances for you? Uh, like Laurel, I think um, you know chances don't come too often in international football. So I think that for them to go further, they got to take him, and then you know they are liable for the odd mistake. If they can keep that that bit down. Um, yeah, I think they get out of the group after that. Then depending on who they get, they have a chance. Mm. Yeah, like Jordan Pickford is. A good goalkeeper, but there's always a worry with him that there could be a bit of a, a mistake in him, you know. Um, Wales, Mark, look, it's great that they're there, right? 1958 was the last time they were there, but are they going to maybe struggle to get out of the group of you, Iran, the USA? And it's all about bail, isn't it, really? In Wales? Yes. Um, yeah, I just I just look at them. And, I mean, Bale's hardly played any football, hasn't he? Yeah. And he came on in the uh, American Cup final, whatever, whatever it's, it's called. But it was it came on all, very, very late. I know he scored a really, really go, good goal. Look, if, if he's not at it, John, they're going to struggle, in all honesty. And I know, you know, the, I know they're, they're really tight together and everything. And, you know, the country's right behind them and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just looking if, if they've really got the quality. I just think it might be a struggle getting out that group for Wales. I think it might be a step too far. Um, I hope not, because it's obviously a really, really good story. But there's something about it. I just, I just don't think it's going to happen. Would you agree? Um, yeah, I think, I think what's going to get them out of the group is that team spirit um, and yeah. that togetherness. Uh, it will, it won't be easy. Bale is massive. You know, not a lot of game time, but your heart is hopefully they can they can pull that one out of the bag and get out of the group and see what happens after that yeah Kiefer Moore Kiefer. John, yeah go on well I was just going to say because I think you know if, if you're a Welsh fan you're looking at the fixtures apart from England and you're saying mm. well we can win the two other games um, I, I'm just not sure that they can I think that's that will be the bottom line for me I mean USA while they haven't got fabulous quality they're, they're unbelievably fit and they cover <laughs> like you know oceans of kilometres etc whatever you want to call it and, and Iran I mean, they've got absolutely nothing to lose. Carlos Kiros. I mean, they'll be really, really difficult to break down. So if, if Wales aren't at it, I think they'll struggle. Well, the heat will help Iran and, and USA do yeah. have good talent. I mean, Pulisic maybe hasn't been in the best to nick the last couple of years in terms of his outstanding previous form. But um, they've got what? Aronson's a good player. Adams is a good well, player for the USA. I'm not sure about that. No. Aronson, Aronson runs, he runs around a lot, John. I'm not sure it's a great end product from him. I'm... I'm I'm, I'm never a big fan of players who play with a head down because they don't see anything. Well, you know more than me. So, um, Laura, what about then the the favourite tag in terms of Brazil? Uh, like they seem to have like obviously they've got a great goalkeeper, um, huge attacking talent. Neymar's in form. Do you see many chinks in Brazil? Well, I think the chinks are at the back, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I mean, Thiago's still there, but I know he's fighting for his place. I mean, they've got two world world class goalkeepers. Who's going to play right back? Probably Danilo, um, was it? Danilo? Yeah, looks so. 
But I think I think the thing it's it's like anything with them, John. I mean, um, you go back to was it nineteen seventy when when they won in Mexico and they were unbelievable. If you look you look at the fullbacks, the fullbacks. Well, Carlos Alberto scored, did he not? He did. Yeah, the fourth <laughs> goal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were just like that was the, that was the best football I'd ever seen at at, at that particular stage at, at my age. It was like wow, s- sensational. And could this be Neymar? Could this be his time? Um, they've got loads of strikers. They just they look sort of midfield going forward. They look better than anybody, but defensively, I'm just not quite certain. If you're going to have to rely on your goalkeeper a lot in this competition, there'll be a day where it, it, it comes unstuck. But I think in terms of the whole um, competition, really, and we're all saying maybe, or majority of people saying no, could be Brazil, could be Argentina, um, the European teams. Uh, Germany possibly difficult to beat. Um, who's getting their goals? I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Everyone's saying oh, the Belgium with De Bruyne and that, which I kind of get. But um, I'm just they brought the two old boys back in the centre backs, haven't they? Old for, for and, and old Vera, both playing in the uh, Belgian league at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of thinking, and, and I think they got beat in a friendly the other day. I know it's only a friendly, but I just I saw the results, so I went immediately and looked at the team. It looked a really, really strong Belgian team, so that's that's not good. The French got quite a few players missing. Um, maybe maybe the Dutch, you know, the Dutch might just be... Well, you know, the old Dutch team, who used to be brilliant, I think they had two or three World Cups on the spin, where they got to the semi-finals, then they had a massive row with each other and got beat. Um, <laughs> but I don't, I don't kind of see that this time. I think they might be a little bit if you want to call Dark Horse, and also maybe Denmark. Denmark, yeah. yeah. You know, Denmark are, you know, everything about them that happened in the Euros, the, the way they de- dealt with everything was was great. They look that they're really together. They've got some outstanding players. And, um, yeah, um, I think in the draw, I th- you look at the, the group that they're in, and I think they'll certainly get out. And if they get on a roll, who's to say they can't go quite a long distance? Well, Europe has provided four, uh, the last four winners and 13 of the last 16 semi-finalists. So it has been very much a European competition and Brazil have really um, been sunk by European teams in the, in the yeah, last few, few tournaments. The, yeah. the only thing, and you mentioned it before, the heat, John. Yeah. Mm. The heat's mad. And, and, and maybe not so much the heat, the humidity. I just, I saw one of the Sky Boys on the other day and, and he was saying it was actually, I think it was 11 in the morning and it, and it was like 32 degrees. Um, and I know it's a little bit hotter now than it, than it usually usually is. It might cool down a little bit, and supposedly they've got you know the ACs going around the side of the pitch and all those kind of things. But Mark will tell you when when it, when it's not just the heat, but also the humidity. You never ever really feel that you got your second wind. Um, so you know it's, teams are going to be have to be super super fit. But I also think that this will this will help the top teams because you know five substitutes. And, you know, the Brazil, the Argentinas, if they were this world and those kind of teams, even England to a certain degree, they've got a lot of very, very good players. They've probably got about 20 of them. So that might be a real bonus for those kind of teams where you can just bring players on. If you've got a chance of bringing five players on, it could be massive. I'm just looking here. Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. Irish time, one o'clock in the day in Qatar, Morocco mm-hmm. against Croatia. I can just see that being an upset in that heat. Yeah, uh, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give you a bet on that, to be honest with you. Um, Mark Kinsler of the leading contenders, who do you like? Uh, I think it's open. Um, I don't think you can put your finger on anyone. I think all the big teams: Brazil, France, Portugal, Spain. I think we'll all come out of the group, and then it's who you play um, in the next round and the round after. But I have a, a soft off for the maybe the Dutch. I the think Dutch they might, right. they might be a surprise this year. But then I'm looking at Messi. You know, eighty six Maradona. Maybe could he pull one out of the bag and? and Force Argentina all the way, so be interesting one this year. Do you think the manager matters like Louis Van Gaal, and it's quite poignant because he's not well, but he's got a very good pedigree. Like he got to the Dutch to the semi-finals in 2014. They didn't have the best of teams. They don't really have a striker, but they've a lot of young attacking players like um, they Gak- got flair. They Gakpo, got the, yeah. like even Xavi Simons hasn't really played, but he, he's been put in the squad. Like, but it's defensively they got Van Dijk, they got Ake, they got uh, Frankie De Jong in the middle of the park. Mm-hmm. Um, does the structure uh, and I say the unity and the the quality tactics matter almost more sometimes than the superstars? I, I think so. Yeah, I think with the, like I said, they've, they're strong at the back defensively. I think they can keep. Playing. You only need to win a game one nil, and I think the Dutch can do that. I think they can score goals. 
um, defensively, I think they're, they're they're stronger than a lot of the other big teams. Um, but now I'm looking forward to. It. I think I think they could be a, a surprise package. Um, in, in terms of Ronaldo and Portugal, is all of this going to overshadow possibly what their potential is, Mark Lawrence? And I hope not, because we've had enough of it already, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I can't. I mean, he, I can't believe what he did. I mean, his his biggest problem, John and and Mark, I'm sure will will agree with me is. He can't come to terms with the fact that he's not the player that he was four, five, six years ago, and he cannot do the same things that he did four or five, six years ago. And he's he's really, really struggling to deal with it. And and we've all had it. And it, it is horrible when all of a sudden you think, you know, I used to be able to do this and I used to be able to do that, and you, and you can't do it anymore. But ah, listen, um, what will be very, very interesting, and you can see with Manchester United, I would say they obviously want to sack him. But is there a problem that they might have to pay him up? And I think that's 40 million quid. So, so that's, that's a, obviously a decision that they have to make. If, if they don't obviously have to pay him up, then just let him go and say, oh, you know, thanks, Ronnie, but, but, but no thanks. And then where is he going to go? That's the other thing. They're, they're now talking, I just read something the other day, that, and it wasn't like in the mail, on, mail online, which is obviously... They're always invading Poland every other week, but it it was a I think it was in the uh, in the Times, and they're saying it looks maybe you might go to America. Now, why would you go to America? Because basically, you know, if you're going to America now, it's tantamount to saying you're in your very last knockings of being a footballer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's 37 years of age now, and uh, it's sad. I think it's just sad, and it's sad for yeah, his legacy no, at the club, sad. and they're taking down the mural and all that kind of thing. It was unnecessary, yeah. really, you know. And it was very also, disrespectful to Van of uh, Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the other thing about him, he's still apparently the same. as in terms of the way he looks after himself, um, four sleeps a day. Do you have you heard that one? And he, he sleeps in one of these cryo chambers or something, and. Yeah. And all those kind of things. So everything is about getting Ronnie, you know, to the top of his game. But it's just, it's just not there anymore, is it? And it, it is very, very sad to, mm. to see. And I always think this is where you need your best mate. He puts his arm around you and says, "You know what? You've been absolutely brilliant, but you've got to look at life in a different way now." In terms of the ebb and flow of a World Cup, what, what, what are the, who? I suppose the question I'm trying to ask Laro is the teams that succeed at World Cups, what are the key things for them? Is it just to build momentum? A lot of teams don't do that well in group stages. Is it, is it a momentum thing? Is it a yeah. key game? What are, what are the ingredients that really oh, get a team like far in competition? Yeah, sorry. Def- definitely momentum. Once you start on a roll, um, and if you're a good side anyway, you, f- you feel that you can beat anybody. Um, it will be interesting just to see the way that the first group games go, whether people are a little bit tentative, thinking, oh, you know what, just try and get a point on the first game and all those kind of things. It would be interesting to see, see the way that they deal with the heat because, you know, I'm going on about it, but it, it will be a, a massive thing. And, look, you know, um, goal scorers for me always with, with the World Cup because there you know so many teams that are very, very close to them. We might be talking about VAR. Well, we will be talking about VAR, won't we, and all those kind of things. But I think if you've got, if you've got players in your team who create and score goals, the more you have, the better your chance. I mean, that sounds obviously stupidly easy, but that's, that's the way that it is. And then you're looking at you know, your, your likes of your Brazils and all those kind of teams, that, which will create lots of opportunities. And Darwin Nunez could be one of those uh, players who could make an impact yeah. mark for Uruguay. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because um, I've watched, a, I've been obviously working at the club for, for quite a while in terms of the, the, the TV side, so I get to see all the games and he is getting better. It's just, it's been interesting because Klopp sort of played him on the left of a three at the moment with Salah on the right and, and Firmino in his, in his little role. And in fairness to, to Nunez, He's been scoring. Um, I do think he's best through the middle. I think he's one of those players where just leave him. Let him go and play up front. But he's lightning quick. He's lightning quick. But let him go and play up front and just, you know, go wherever he wants to go, which occasionally I think with people with talent like that, I think you must do. I don't think you can tie him down. And every every time he plays on the left, he's always cutting in, cutting in. and, And honestly, he's been successful. But I do see... I do see him playing through the middle because 
he is he is seriously seriously quick and he's a goal scorer Mark Hensel, are you a bit less excited about this than you would not given all the controversy around it and the absurdity around it or are you just gonna are you able to separate the that thought from the thought of, of enjoying the football for the next month um I probably won't watch as many games as a, as a lot of people but I'm looking forward to it um, it's always nice if if your your own nation is is in it gives you that m- little bit more mm-hmm. interest. I think it's come a lot. It, it's just hit us all of a sudden. In my eyes, I have you know you read the paper now and again, or the build up to it. Don't watch a lot of TV, and all of a sudden it's kicking off on Sunday. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to certain games, Wales, England, um, Brazil's all the big the big hairs. But I think the like we're saying about the the group stage, I think it's it happens after that. I think the World Cup will start in the knockout stages, and um, you're asking about. How how the winning teams get there? I think we never a winning team, but we had this Cameroon, Germany, and and Saudi Arabia. How do we go with that group? Is don't lose it, but win one of the games, you know. So we start off with Cameroon with a, with a performance, and then you go into Germany and you're one 0 down. With it felt like a win when you scored in the ninety fourth minute, but then you know you needed to win one game maybe to get out of that group, and that was the Saudi Arabia one for us. And then you go out of that group, and then you're looking at the next day. Who do you get? You know, and we're watching the South Africa and the Spain game. We're playing the winners of that. You think we want South Africa? Is a better chance of beating South Africa? But Spain win it, and they end up playing Spain. And you know you need that little bit of luck as well. Um, you know we had a penalty missed, we could have won a two-one, but we could have also lost without another penalty. So it's uh, it's just one of them things. I think we could have gone further. We would have got through the Spain game because I think the draw started to turn out a little bit nice. I think Turkey were still in it, Korea were still in it. If you just got through that Spain game, you could end up in the quarters of the semis. But it wasn't to be for us. But they had they had the look on the night with the with the penalties, and that's a lot of it. A lot of it is down to luck. And uh, John, we, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, I did mean to interrupt Mark. That did have you seen the thing with Blatter with the obviously, um, I think it's about a four part program with with. Yes, yeah, so I watched it. I watched it during the week. I watched it during the week. Yeah. Well, that say that tells you everything you need to know yeah, about yeah, the World yeah, Cup, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really seriously does. And and I mean, you know, to to be playing in December in Qatar. Is, is just ridiculous, but it's all about money. Yeah, and, and you know that's one of the big problems with football now at this at this level. It is all about money. Look at you know the people who are owning football clubs, especially in the Premier League, etc. And once obviously everyone lets them in, they will they will change it. They'll, yeah. they'll change the way the game is. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Yeah, and just it is interesting, Lara, like how players will perform mid-season. That is one thing we don't really know how that's going to go. Um, I would don't. I don't. I don't think. I. I would be more looking at end towards the end of the season for the players right. who've been. Okay. You know, I really seriously would because I mean, how many games have we played in the, in the Premier League? Yeah. 13, 12, 13, 13, 13, 13, yeah, yeah. Which is nothing. Generally, when you look at it, yes, they're playing other competitions, but there's only been obviously Champions League and there's a carry bar, whatever it's called this week, and um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't see that being an issue. I see from maybe. February, March time, the last two or three months, I think I think we'll see some very, very strange results and very strange performances from players who've been because started in the Premier League, all good, and they've just got going. And now they're going to a higher level. Yeah. And then they're going to have to come back and they're going to have to deal with it. And teams are going to, de- you know, managers don't even know how it's going to be. They have no idea. And I know. Yeah, as you probably see that there's loads of teams going to play it against each other, aren't they? In, in this Dubai competition yeah. as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Hey, look at it. It is what it is. Yeah, I think one one thing interesting, like there will be teams knocked out early as well, so there will be players who mm. will get a break. Mark, we have to have, we have to wrap it up here. Mark Hinsley. So, who's going to win us your your tip to win? Are uh, Holland. Holland. Okay. Um, and your player of the tournament will be. Maybe Van Dyke, is it? Or if it's Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'll go for that. Or Sterling. Or, or and Raheem Sterling. And maybe Golden Boost pick? Um, I'm going to go for now. Long shot and go Messi. Messi, OK. Uh, Laro, who's going to win it? Um, Brazil. Player of the tournament Brazil. will be? N- Neymar, Neymar, Neymar. And Neymar to be the top scorer as well, yeah? Yeah, why not? I mean, he's been a bit of a show pony every World Cup. Like, you can't tackle me, but it, it, maybe the penny's dropped. Laro, enjoy it. We'll speak soon. T- all right, thank you. Cheers. Yeah, Mark. Mark Kinsella, thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Appreciate thank your you. time. Enjoy the chat, and uh, we'll speak to you soon.